I am Sadie Drury and we're out at Seven Hills Vineyard. Um, this vineyard was planted in the late 1990s and there's about 160 acres planted right now. Um, it's a beautiful breezy day and we're standing out in our low block. Uh, the elevation where we're standing right now is about a thousand feet um, and the top of the vineyard is about 1200 and the lowest part of the vineyard is about 850 feet elevation. So right here at Seven Hills Vineyard, we only get about eight to 10 inches of rain a year. Kind of an interesting fact at, in Walla Walla and the Walla Walla Valley is starting over in Tushi, they get like six inches of rain a year. And then each mile you move closer to the Blue Mountains is one more inch of rain per year because there's more rainfall closer to the mountains. So this is a pretty dry site. It makes it perfect for farming grapes because we can completely control the irrigation and control how much water we put on the grapes each year. So this type of soil we have here is called Luss. And Luss is actually a windblown soil. It's very common in the Walla Walla Valley. And we have Luss at all elevations. But the thing that makes different elevations unique here at Seven Hills Vineyard is down here at a low elevation where we're standing right now is the Luss is really deep. It goes for a really long time. We're not actually sure how far it goes because we've never dug a hole that deep. But as you move up to higher elevations, the Luss sits on top of basalt. And so um, there might be, you know, five feet of lust. In places we only have like three feet of lust and then you run into that hard basalt and it's fractured basalt. So the good news is, is we think that the roots actually can get down into the basalt, um, but the soil differences, the depth, changes how we manage grapes at different elevations in the vineyard. Here at Seven Hills Vineyard, the soil health is very important to us. Uh, we do everything we can do in our power to take care of the ground. Um, so one of the things we use is or we don't use is herbicides. We're really careful not to use any herbicides on the soil because we believe it could possibly negatively impact the soil microbiome, uh, everything that lives in the soil that we want to keep healthy. Um, other things we do is we add our nutrients through the drip. We add things that are natural, like compost tea. It, can't, it contains uh, worm castings in a liquid form, and so we put that into the drip basically adds that good bacteria back into the soil. We also add humic acid, which is just a liquid form of carbon. It's also really good for the soil. In the fall time, we'll add compost. And what we do is we put the compost along the top here, and then we come through with the tractor and we bury all that compost. At the same time, we bury these burial canes so that it's there all winter long, breaking down. And then in the springtime, when the plants wake up, that compost is broken down and it's ready for the plants to utilize. So the block we're standing in right now is a really premier block of Merlot. Here we don't farm things very congested or crowded because we want each of the clusters to have their own little space in the canopy. We don't want a bunch of clusters up stacked against each other because that's a good way to get um, disease pressure or not very good color development. Um, if this was white grapes, we'd probably have a more crowded canopy, but we'd even allow the canopy to sprawl out more because with white grapes, um, you kind of want higher crop. You want the grapes to hang out a little bit longer. You want more time on the vine. And one way to control that is to you know, have four tons an acre instead of three tons an acre. Uh, rosé is very similar. So if this was rosé, it would also be more crowded. Um, with red grapes, we'll come in here, we'll open up the canopy a little bit, we'll make sure it gets sun exposure. With rosé, we don't necessarily want that ton of, uh, sun exposure because think about how um, you're taking red grapes and making a white wine. So you don't want a lot of tannins. You don't want a lot of color. We make sure that the crop is perfect here for these premium red grapes and then with rosé we kind of farm things similar but we leave lots of crop, we don't pull any leaves and then with white grapes it's a very similar approach as rosé. 